couple of Canada geese landing. <coughs> hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's May 25th, 2022, and uh, one of the things we've, well, we've had uh, at least 24 hours without any rain, and the beds look to be a little bit drier, dry enough that I could use the rototiller. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and tell you what my plans are for this morning. So it's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit right now, uh, cooler than those real hot spell that we did have. But uh, we're over here in the eastern garden plot. This is the area that we took the fencing down. I reshaped these permanent raised beds. And uh, previously I've talked in many videos that we are a minimum till. Uh, but I do have a rototiller on our BCS uh, 749 uh, walk behind two wheel tractor. Uh, I have a power harrow as well, and the power harrow I'd rather use in most, most cases because we're only going to disrupt the soil down about a half an inch to three quarters, maybe an inch is how deep I'd go, uh, just to, to get the bed set. But as you can see, the, over the, the last several years, the, uh, the paths have become filled in somewhat and have become narrower. The beds have become wider, not quite as tall. And so one of my goals, I think what I'll do is I'm going to disconnect. Uh, I've just disconnected the main lines connecting the drip tape. And I'll show you that in a second. And uh, my goal is before cutting the tapes and resizing them for our plans for this year is to pull the tapes off and reshape the beds as best as I can uh, for what we want. Thea did get the... Uh, the scarlet red runner bean uh, seeds in yesterday. Uh, I haven't watered them yet because I'm not going to turn on this drip irrigation tape because I may end up, who knows, there could be damage to the tape uh, over the winter time so I need to go through and check those but I thought let's disconnect things here. So one of the things I do really like about uh, these drip tape systems is each individual drip tape I can turn off right here and it's just a little hole that we uh, poke through the uh, through our line and uh, they're all open right now since they're pointed in this direction but I've disconnected it here at this elbow and up here at this T I've also disconnected it so you can see that's the T there and so that'll allow me to take the whole the whole drip tape system up pick it up, move it over onto the lawn someplace, get it out of the way uh, in pieces in a sense so I don't have to worry about uh, doing any damage to anything and get it out of the way and then I can do what I want to do with the beds, reshaping the beds, rebuilding the beds. Then after I've got the beds all set, I can bring the drip tapes back, charge the drip tape systems and say, oh, there's a leak in this one so there's no sense in reusing that one and so on and so forth. So I hope that makes sense. And uh, just the, my approach to going through this at the beginning of the season, I don't know if a cat has bit into it or a bull or somebody has, has damaged it or one of our turtles came through uh, or whatever. So always assume that drip tapes are not functioning properly until you've tested it and verified that the system's going to work. So. That's what I'm going to do now is get these drip tapes off, get the uh, 749 BCS walk behind Italian made tractor, which is a, a good market gardener tool, which I find very, very effective. And what I'll do is I'll go down uh, the paths and the beds, and then I may use the hiller, which is another thing that looks like a, uh, a, um, uh, rototiller and that what that'll do is take the material from in the paths and throw it up onto the beds saves me a lot of shoveling uh, I may do that I'm not positive and I could end up using the power harrow on the very top or use the tilter that you've seen me use in so many videos so that's where we're at at this point I'm going to get in
Okay, I just got done using uh, the BCS uh, tiller uh, behind the BCS 749 walk behind two wheel tractor. And I used that to go down uh, the paths. Uh, and of course, the, tr the BCS tractor is pretty wide where the wheels end up going and all. But that really helped to break up any roots or material, especially we've got the, uh, the honey locust tree there. So uh, by going down the paths first with the, uh, with the tiller, really we're able to break everything up that was, that was uh, compacted in the, the paths. Did that with, with each one of the paths. Then I went and got the, uh, the swivel. This is a Berta swivel. Uh, rotary plow so I'm able to take the what's similar to a tiller and instead of being the tines all going in the same direction have them on an angle so that they would throw soil up to each of the beds so I guess uh, the way I would say it is I'm just much weaker than I was uh, two year two years or three years ago when I used it last being laid up in bed as much as I have been these last couple of years with uh, with the coronavirus and now with the uh, with my sciatic nerve, I've lost a lot of muscle mass and boy, it really tuckered me out. So I came down here with a swivel rotary plow, which is in 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 essence a type of hiller. It takes the material where you're where you're running and throws it up on the sides. Uh, and once you don't have a bed on each side it makes it harder to maintain it so you can see I did a good job with my first two sets at the time I got over here I started getting winded much weaker and also you could see my uh, beds aren't as uh, good as they could be so I'll have to take the rake and redress up these uh, beds I'll probably take the tilter that's the battery operated small narrow little uh, tiller in a sense that I usually just surface prep the beds uh, and you can see again here as soon as I ran out of the bed on the other side I just couldn't muscle it over uh, not as strong as I was and I'm trying not to hurt myself you can see there's uh, relatively newer chips in this area here that were in the path and some of those got thrown up on the surface and of course, this is the bed that I cut in half. And there's some of the chips that got thrown up on there, but there is compost in there as well. So I'll take some time and use a rake to try and even up these beds some. And, uh, and then I'll probably use some alfalfa pellets. Now these beds all had a cover crop with mustard greens in them uh, last fall after we harvested our crops. Uh, and so what I will end up doing is, so all the root material is still there. I probably will go ahead and lay some alfalfa pellets on the surface and either just use the tilter or the power harrow. Now the power harrow doesn't have the tines that go in this direction. They sort of swirl the surface. So you could set the depth that has a roller in the back of it. So you're really just disturbing the first, oh, you could just have it be two inches if you wanted or half an inch. Uh, I'll probably let it go like two inches in here since so, since we threw so much of the path up on top of here and I'll want to work in some of the alfalfa pellets into it as well. But so I've got more work to do on organizing the beds first, getting them straightened out, uh, getting the paths straightened out, getting the alfalfa pellets in the tops of the beds and working the alfalfa pellets down a little ways. So. This is me using the equipment in a weakened state, but things will work out. We'll, we'll get the beds right eventually here.
Okay, this is a small little tilter. You can see the size of my hand here. Uh, it doesn't go very deep, doesn't disturb much of the soil. I've got it operated by my uh, DeWalt cordless battery, uh, cordless drill rather, battery operated. And I'll show you what, what we got over here so far. I've got my GoPro Hero 9 on my chest. And we'll see how things look. We'll take a look at things first. So, hopefully I've already shown part of the video footage from the GoPro Hero 10, where I had used the rototiller to go down the path first, each one of the paths. Then I came down with the, uh, the swivel rotary plow, which is a hiller, and I was able to throw material up on both sides of the beds and these I got a little bit out of whack they weren't nice and straight like I like them to be but they turned out being okay then I came out with the garden rake just a simple uh, ordinary garden rake and I walked down each path and I pulled up on the sides that I wanted to pull up on so now what I'm going to do is uh, use the the tilter which is like a a miniature rototiller, battery operated, uh, uh, you know, just a, a, a small uh, cordless drill. And I'm going to go down each one of the hills and it'll just sort of flatten them out a little bit. It'll expose some rocks and little sticks and all and some more root. And then I'll go down the paths as well. But our goal here is always to be able to kneel down, uh, kneel down, put our knees against the bed have our feet in the path and work not bent over crouched all the time. That's why I make these beds. Uh, you know, those are our handicap beds over there on the other side of the fence. Uh, and they're really designed for working with a wheelchair. And I found with back injuries and as we get older and as you develop arthritis, uh, we want to be as comfortable as possible. So building beds like this works out for us. And then ultimately using the drip tape and the weed mats, then we're spending less time in the gardens and spending more time uh, doing other things that we enjoy doing. So I'm going to take the garden tilter down here now and we'll see how things work out.
So that's where I was just working a little while ago, getting those beds prepped over there. Uh, last week I was working on this area. This is where one of the first hoop trellis that I took down was. And I dug out all the area. I dug out the sod. It was too deep over here next to the concrete. Uh, there's the cattle panels that came down from the trellis that was here. And, uh, and I tried to conserve a lot of the soil uh, in here. There are a few pieces of tape still in there. There's a couple of beans and some uh, Pennsylvania Smartweed. I just picked out a whole bunch of rocks out of here, out of the surface area. I'm sure there's a bunch more. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is run the rototiller over here and I see a bit of quack grass right here and Creeping Charlie. That quack grass we don't want. Of course, Creeping Charlie with its root system as well. That's a bean right there. Uh, so what I'm going to do, since we don't have any rain right now, and I need to get the beds prepped for getting things planted, this is where I was planning on putting the sweet potatoes. I probably still will put them here, but I'm a little bit concerned about the soil here. I hate rocks in my soil where I'm gardening. I've just been dealing with rocks here on this property for so many years, I'm just so sick of it. So I'm going to fire up... Uh, the BCS tractor. This is uh, the BCS 749, which you've seen in older videos that I've had, and that's a BCS rototiller there. I seldom use a rototiller. I didn't use it on the beds over there, but I did use it on the uh, pads, and I used the uh, swivel rotary plow on the pads as well to throw the soil up. Uh, the really neat thing about this BCS tractor, or the BCS tractors and the Bertas, is you can take the handlebars and, and you can put it forward or reverse. It's got a PTO shaft there that takes a whole bunch of different uh, implements. So I got the, uh, the power harrow, the rototiller, the rotary swivel plow, uh, the flow mower, uh, those, and I also have a bottom, pl uh, a uh, potato picker, which I don't love, uh, that goes with this as well. Quite a nice piece of equipment, very powerful. And it's actually a bit much for me to handle in tight spots right now, uh, but I'm still in the recovery phase. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead, fire up the, uh, the uh, BCS, till this area, then I'm gonna go out back near the solar panels. And um, right behind the solar panel array, I used to have raspberry plants back there, and I put, uh, and I cleaned the area up last year, and then I, um, put a cover crop in. I just went back there and smoothed it out a little bit. I re-excavated pond six, which is right below that, which is one of the real leaky ponds. And uh, so I'm gonna go back there and make two passes uh, or two, um, two beds for, uh, for the raspberry plants. So we'll see how that works. Here we go.
So given that we have, uh, we're building garden beds on gravel and all, uh, this is to be expected. It, losing the tines is, is not uncommon. I'll check to see underneath it over there if I've lost more tines, but this is the first time I've sheared off all four bolts and, uh, holding uh, the spindles that hold the, the tines. So it's a bit of a frustrating thing. We wear these things down and because it's such bony, rocky ground. And the ground that you saw me working today is actually some of the, the soil that we've been working for about 12 years. So it's really in good shape. Uh, there's a lot of nutrients in the soil, a lot of microbes in the soil. It's a shame that I have to turn it because there are just so many rocks in there that get in the way. So each time I plant something there, we've got to turn it. And these are the things that happen. So we'll, we'll fix her up and get better. So that's it for today's video, folks. Uh, you know, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please leave them below. I really don't like tilling the soil, but when we've got to get into the rocky stuff, I do do it. Uh, I hate doing it uh, just to help me free up some of those rocks and get them out of there and all. So uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Otherwise, have a super fantastic day and stay safe. Bye-bye now.